We don't know yet the cause of the train derailment that currently has six dead and over 200 injured. Was it a failed infrastructure, a result of Washington kleptocrats who make themselves rich while the country goes off the rails? Or was it a deliberate act of sabotage? Just as many people will wonder what happened when the U.S. crashes, the aftermath will be just as bad as this train crash, except there won't be any outside help coming. This horrific train crash is a metaphor for the trends that are about to derail and crash our economy and nation. We just saw a train robbery by drug enforcement agency thugs taking $16,000 in cash from a man for no other reason than that they could get away with it. Our legal infrastructure and our economic infrastructure are broken down. Like two rails of a train track, these foundations of our country are crumbling. And it's not benign neglect, but the deliberate sabotage of our nation and our economy. This is David Knight reporting for Infowars.com. Now Monsanto it has been derated from a good investment by major investment firms to a risky bad investment. Uh, their profits are in trouble. McDonald's is in trouble. They're both an allied uh, operation. This is Frankenfood. And they get up there and they lie. And they say, oh, it's just like George Washington Carver crossing two tomatoes. No. Because those tomatoes are closely enough related that they're able to breed together. But just like if you get a donkey and a horse, very similar, to have sex, they can procreate, but they have a sterile offspring. It's called a mule. I'm not a geneticist, but I know these basic things. It's like a liger, a tiger and a lion. You can breed them. The offspring, a liger, is sterile. What happens when you breed two tomatoes together that are further enough apart that they're able to get together and share their different traits, but they don't produce seeds, or the seeds don't produce more fruit? Tomato is a fruit, for those that didn't know. They've gone beyond that and created GMO where you'll have 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 traits in it. Where it lasts longer, it doesn't die. Bugs can't eat it. If they do eat it, they die because there's a natural pesticide produced. And they argue, well, it's a natural pesticide. Yeah, but you boost it a thousand times or more. Yeah, the plant produces a pesticide or invites a fungus to grow on it that's poisonous, but it's not at that level. It's not inside the plant. You wash it off. Didn't used to kill the honeybees. And that's all 20, 30-year-old technology that's wreaking havoc right now. But as all this comes out, the system is panicking. At the bottom of the hour, our guest will be with us for the hour. I will do a five-minute news blitz on incredible economic news, incredible world news, just over-the-top intel. We've got economists coming out, mainline ones with headlines like this. Millions upon millions of people are going to die on a worldwide scale when the debt bubble burst. I mean... <laughs> Video, student confronts Jeb Bush, your brother created ISIS. Iowa man arrested for Facebook post calling for murder of white cops. Roomba maker to develop smart robots to surveil your home. Manslaughter charge against black officer in gray case derails race agenda in Baltimore. Video, Marines practice of doing citizens inside internment camps. That's linked on DrudgeReport.com. It's on Infowars.com. Rand Paul visits secret room to read Obama trade, the SPP, or the TPP, calls for public release of deal. Yeah, it's thousands of pages long. There's a photo in the article. It, it's a locked door. They search you. You can't have anything on you. And then you go in, and that's since lawmakers demanded to see it a few months ago. For the last two years, while well, they've been writing this, the corporate lawyers globally, for this Asia partnership, Congress can't see it. I mean, just think about that. And it's the same thing. Who sits on these boards, Monsanto? Who sits on the IMF advisory boards? Who, who sits on the uh, World Trade or, uh, Organization board? You, you guess it, Monsanto representatives. Who sits over the FDA and EPA, Monsanto? And back when I would get Jeffrey Smith and Percy Smizer and others on, uh, Monsanto was suing people that criticized him then with slap suits. They were, and, they, and they still do. But that intimidation didn't work. Folks that brought you Asian orange dioxin dumped in black communities, 
uh, I mean, the, the people that brought you aspartame, they bought Searle. They couldn't get it approved in the 70s. They got it approved in 1981. Now admitted to absolutely give you cancer, you name it. Kill monkeys in lab tests. I, I mean, this isn't a joke. Monsanto is the most devilish company I could think of. I mean, they really are wicked. Uh, and now the world is waking up. Every couple days, a new country is banning the importation. Uh, every uh, new studies have come out linking it to cancer in humans. The UN has come out. Uh, I mean, humanity is awakening. And by the way, it wasn't the the it didn't come from the top. It was the UN scientist. So more and more, just like FDA scientists in 2000 and again a few years ago, almost unanimously, it was like 99 percent of them sent letters to their bosses saying hydrofluorosilicic acid is causing bone cancer, brain damage, IQ reduction. Here's our studies. Here's our Harvard studies. It needs to be pulled out of the water. It doesn't help the teeth. You need a little bit of calcium fluoride. This is hydrofluorosilic acid. If you're going to put it in there, you need to put a little bit of calcium fluoride. This is deadly poison. They just reduced it by half in the water and have now banned it in all pesticides. Already banned worldwide. We're having some devastating victories right now. Uh, and this is very exciting. And the man spearheading so much of this, and we sell his books and his films... Jeffrey Smith is an international best-selling author, award-winning filmmaker, executive director of the Institute for Responsible Technology, and a leading spokesman on the health dangers of GMOs, the most recognized consumer advocate promoting healthier non-GMO choices. And he's the author of the documentary and the book, Genetic Roulette. Uh, he's the executive director of the Institute for Responsible Technology, non-GMOshoppingguide.com, responsibletechnology.com, seizuredeception.com. And find all his books and films at InfoWarsStore.com and support both of our operations. Jeffrey, am I overstating? And it doesn't mean we're overall winning the war. We've been losing it horribly. America's the dumping ground for everything. We know that, the test tube. But if we were behind 50 points in a football game, have we just come back 37 points and we've got a quarter left? And, and are we just lobbing Hail Marys and catching every one. I mean, it doesn't mean we've won, but are we not racing back to a global awakening? I mean, are we on the cusp of a new renaissance? Because because it was dark having you on 14, 15, 16 years ago, having Percy Smizer on 16 years ago when he first launched his operation. Uh, now it seems like, you know, courts are coming out admitting Monsanto planted their stuff on their crops. Monsanto's having things reversed. I want to talk about how they're striking back, part two of this interview, but, but, but am I accurate with you at the center of this who testifies to you know, major uh, political bodies worldwide? Where are we right now in the global fight to, to uh, not have poison food? Well, we're definitely winning, Alex, and the chief victory is among consumers. Uh, as you know, in 1999, consumer concern on GMOs caused a tipping point of consumer rejection. And it was this very specific moment in time when the food companies realized that using GMOs was going to cost them money. And that moment in time was April 27th, when Unilever said no more GMOs in its European brands. The next day, Nestle's said no more GMOs in its European brands. The next week, next week or two, everyone else followed. That tipping point of consumer rejection occurred in the natural products industry in the United States in 2013 when Whole Foods announced that when a product becomes third-party verified as non-GMO, it increases sales by 15 to 30 percent. Immediately, thousands of products were enrolled in verification. There's over 30,000 non-GMO verified products in the United States that tipped the natural products industry. Now we see products like Cheerios and Grape Nuts and Ben and & Jerry's and Target Home Brands and soon Hershey's all declaring non-GMO on their package. As soon as they start increasing in market share in the United States, the rest of the food industry will realize, I can't wait till my chief competitor goes non-GMO before me, or I'll start losing customers. So we're looking for a tipping point of consumer rejection in the United States this year or at the very latest next year, and we think there'll be a clean out of GMOs and direct ingredients over the next three years and for animal products over the next five. And Monsanto is, is caving in all over the world and pulling its push in Europe for GMOs. If, I mean, I liken this to Hitler's collapse on the Eastern Front, launching a counteroffensive on the Western Front at the Battle of the Bulge. I, I think that's the point we're at. If we beat them at the Battle of the Bulge in the next couple of years, I believe we're seeing a collapse-level event uh, of uh, these operators. 
Not only that, but we just got incredible ammunition from the World Health Organization last month that declared Monsanto's Roundup and its active ingredient glyphosate as a probable carcinogen. Since then, 30,000 Argentine medical doctors have petitioned their government to ban it. The federal prosecutor in Brazil has said that their government should ban it. The president of Colombia said they're no longer going to use it to spray on the cocoa fields to eradicate that trade. It was banned in Richmond in California, and it continues to Bermuda. be the subject. Pardon? Bermuda just banned it. Bermuda. So what's happening now is all over the world, they're realizing that Monsanto actually has known about these health dangers for decades. In fact, an EPA document became available showing that there was concerns about cancer back in the late 1980s. Similarly, there was evidence showing birth defects back in the 1980s. They've been covered up by Monsanto and regulators. And it turns out in Argentina, the peasants that are sprayed with this Roundup or glyphosate have much higher levels of birth defects, 400% increase region-wide, 70 times in one hospital, and an increase in cancer of 300% in one area and higher in other regions. We also saw in China, when they started introducing genetically engineered Roundup-ready soybeans for their soybean oil, it was reported that cancer and heart disease and other problems skyrocketed. I was there giving a presentation in, in Beijing last year. A general who was in the audience had earlier reported that he warned the government and warned the people that this new genetically modified Roundup Ready soybean oil was linked to all of these increased in diseases and the army of China thereafter refused to serve its own soldiers GMOs even though the government still allows the rest of the population to eat it. In fact, that came out in the news that the Chinese elite are obsessed with non-GMO and were found to have secret government-funded gardens. It turns out that Bush, the past Bush administration, absolutely insisted that their kitchen be organic. And evidently Obama has followed through. So it turns out that those that know the situation don't want to risk themselves. In fact, a former Monsanto scientist told me that three of his colleagues were doing the safety studies. Stay there, on stay there. This is amazing. I want to hear it when we come back. Now they're coming out and saying, you know, that words are going to be copyright where you supposedly can't use them in language. Uh, they're now saying you can't work on your own car. In fact, this morning I was talking to a lady. And she was telling me about her Keurig coffee maker and how she, her one that she had for two years broke, so she bought a new one. And I said, yeah, I have one of those. Uh, but I said, mine's old. She said, well, you put the new little canister in there, and it's not one of their coffees. It won't work. It's got a uh, RFID chip in it. She, she, she was a listener, and she was telling me how she heard about that years ago. And, oh, yeah. And so you have to go in and basically put tape over it or cut the chip off so that her other, in this case, she said organic coffee, we were having an organic discussion at the gym, would go in there. So see, that's the type of monopoly they're trying to create. And I'm, and I'm kind of diverting off into another subject, but it all connects. We were talking about Volkswagen. You buy a Volkswagen, two years later, your battery doesn't work. You, you go get a third-party battery, same battery, works great. They remotely, from the factory, turn it off. You have to go in and pay a $150 service charge to have them certify it as theirs. Now, that's where all this is going. And with this genetically engineered food, that's where it's going. Now, this is a short segment, Mr. Smith. Long segment coming up. You were going into victories right now. I'm glad to hear from you, the expert, that, that I'm not overestimating how exciting this is. Let me shift gears, and we'll go back into good news and where the rest of the fight is in the next segment. In this short segment, as we talk to Jeffrey Smith, uh, ResponsibleTechnology.com, probably the leading spokesperson fighting this stuff, on the GMO, there's Mercola and others, but they cover you know the whole spectrum. Let me ask you this question. How is the empire going to strike back? What's, what's going to be their battle of the bulge, uh, counter-offensive? What are they doing? Well, they're spending millions of dollars now promoting the, quote, benefits of GMOs through media and also trying to discredit those of us like me and Vadana Shiva and others claiming that we are anti-science and uncredible. So they're actually cornered against the wall. And in discussions with my colleagues around the world, it's clear that they're doing a full court press. I'm here in Ecuador, where the country actually has a constitutional amendment saying that no GMOs are allowed. If you look at WikiLeaks, the United States government 
had a plan to undermine the Constitution here and get them to overturn it. So they actually paid for bringing reporters from Ecuador to the United States so that Monsanto can train them how to report on GMOs. And sure enough, they started giving Monsanto's false talking points in the press here in Ecuador. Then they surrounded the president, who does have the ability to overturn the constitutional uh, prohibition, and he came out saying that GMOs could increase yields by 400%, and he's now against the constitutional provision. It turns out GMOs actually do not increase yields at all. In fact, many times decrease yields. But agroecology, which was recommended by the world's experts, that increases yields, which he's ignoring. So they're focusing on the four targeted areas, politicians, media, the general public, and farmers, and trying to use as much evidence as they can, which is false, to try and convince them that this is absolutely necessary to feed the world, to save economies, to prevent the use of agricultural chemicals, all of which has been... Sure, but the effects of it are so deadly. We're 30 years into this nightmare that no amount of BS is ever going to paper over the prima facie reality. Well, I'll talk about it in the next segment, about the specific diseases that we now know are probably linked to GMOs. I'll say probably, but I'm very confident as thousands of physicians in the United States who are prescribing non-GMO diets, they are very confident that these particular diseases are linked. And why it's so important now not to, not to just buy non-GMO, but to buy organic, because Monsanto's glyphosate or Roundup is sprayed on wheat, barley, lentils, sweet potatoes, potatoes, sugarcane. Over 100 different crops are now authorized to have high levels of glyphosate residue, and it's sprayed just before sure. harvest as a ripening agent. Briefly describe in one minute what, why glyphosate, I mean, they admit it grows breast cancer. Why is it so deadly? Well, I can do it in one minute, but we should spend a little more time. It's, it's, noted, it's definitely a probable carcinogen according to the World Health Organization. It's linked to birth defects. It's an antibiotic that kills the beneficial gut bacteria. It causes an overgrowth of negative gut bacteria. It blocks the gut bacteria's ability to produce tryptophan, which is a precursor to serotonin and melatonin, so it can affect mood, behavior, sleep, uh, uh, blood sugar chemistry, as well as um, obesity. It also is linked to an endocrine disruptor. It also blocks the, the liver's ability to detoxify. Uh, stay there. I want you to recap all that when we come back. And I'm sure it's all an accident that these eugenicists that gave us all this other bad stuff at Monsanto came up with this. I'm sure it's all an accident. We'll be right back. We're on the march. Read about it in None Dare Call a Conspiracy, published in 1972, two years before I was born. And then I read None Dare, uh, after I read None Dare Call a Conspiracy by Gary Allen, whose son runs and founded Politico today. Uh, the late, great Gary Allen, I, I went and I read the books they recommended that they were quoting from, Tragedy and Hope, uh, The Anglo-American Establishment, both by Carol Quigley, um, other books like The um, Technotronic Era by Zbigniew Brzezinski, and others. And you read those, and they explain everything from their perspective. So you need to understand, uh, this is about finding a global monopoly. We're going back to our guest, I'm going to give the floor uh, right through this long segment so you can really break down what we know glyphosate's doing. And he's a major target, so he puts provisos in there. That's a whole other story here. Because Monsanto went after farmers, researchers, scientists, persecuted people. I've had top genetic engineers on the show that were making millions a year who even own percentages. I've had a bunch of them on. Uh, Ian, and new potatoes that were coming out, and new corn. And they would say, hey, this is sterilizing the rats, so this is killing the guinea pigs. And they'd say, shut up or you're fired. So there's been a war, a long history of persecution that I hope our guest can talk about maybe in the next segment before he leaves us and before Percy Smizer, a true hero, joins us. Because they've gone through hell to bring us to where we're now here. Kind of like they... I think manipulated the vote in California and other states to not let GMO labeling happen. But the fight educated everybody, so it even blew up bigger. See, George Washington lost almost all the first battles for the first five years of the war. Then began to win the battles the last year and a half. But every time they w lost a battle, they still escaped with enough of a force to reconstitute to wear out the juggernaut. So it's perseverance, ladies and gentlemen, that wins. That's why if I get destroyed, I get set up, I get you know brought down, believe me, I get plenty of threats, we're in the zeitgeist. We're not touching it, we're in it. Doesn't matter because I know the war will be won. 
And it's not some heroic reason I'm doing that. It's self-preservation for the species. I really do. I'm an individual. But when you become a real individual, you then understand the collective. They try to bring a collective that you submit to and give up your individualism. No. We as individuals gravitate to what, what's the core of the human spirit, the human drive, and then we collectively radiate those ideas and actions and then build a harmonistic collective. But the collective comes out of the individual, not out of the collective. And that's my own philosophy and my own ideas, but I know it's true. And so I am the planet. I am the people. You are the people. We are... We are this species, and, and we have to decide that we care about everybody. But that doesn't mean then being told, oh, do this to show your moral. You've got to go do research to really follow the right path to really help people. You can't just give away your free will to the false corporate collective that it tells you is moral. I'm ranting now. Uh, briefly, we're running two specials right now, powerful concentrated herbs. We have InfoWarsLife.com. We're going to launch this through next week. 20% off super male vitality, 20% off super female vitality. Uh, these are just a whole bunch of concentrated herbs of the highest quality. You've heard the rave reviews, known to just really supercharge the body, the libido, the energy, you name it. Uh, it's what I've been taking. Prostagard is 10 different saw palmetto, organic, and, and other things known to really help the prostate and, and, and other functions uh, that are connected to that. Uh, everybody knows this. I even showed you in a Mayo Clinic articles yesterday. This is one of the most documented things, and it's got concentrated, strong, organic saw palmetto. It's got a bunch of other things that are absolutely known, absolutely known to turbocharge uh, that same same activity. Vitamin D, zinc, selenium, copper, manganese, uh, chromium, uh, and a bunch of other uh, ingredients. Saw palmetto, lycopene, uh, the healthy plant sterols. Uh, this is the super formula, over 40 bucks from medical doctor. I was getting something similar from, you know, in, in his practice. He said, you're 40, you know, get on this, you know, about two years ago. So I said, why not develop our own supercharged version? It's out, InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com, or 888-253-3139. And thank you for your prayers and support. And I was saying it wrong earlier. Uh, it's uh, ResponsibleTechnology.org. Uh, not, not com, responsible technology.org, uh, non GMO shopping guide.com, and seeds of deception.com. Jeffrey Smith at the tip of the spear. So, so, so get into what it's doing to us, where the rest of the fight's going, and, and, and then people need to realize those that have gone through hell, uh, to stand up and tell the truth. And thank God it's not in vain because we can save millions of lives if we, uh, Go ahead and finally uh, discredit this uh, deadly chemical. Go ahead, uh, Jeffrey Smith. Great. Thank you. I'll talk about Roundup. I also want to talk about the new apple and potato before we break with a new technology that may be far worse than anything we've seen. Now, Roundup, or glyphosate, its active ingredient, was originally patented as a descaler to clean industrial boilers and pipes. That's because it chelates or grabs minerals, all sorts of minerals, all the metallic minerals, zinc, uh, uh, chromium, magnesium, manganese, calcium, all of those. Now, when they discarded the uh, glyphosate on the ground, it killed the plants. And so Monsanto patented it as an herbicide. Now, it turns out that it can de deplete the minerals in the crops, and the animals in the United States eat mostly Roundup-ready crops. So the animals in the United States, the livestock, have a universal deficiency of certain minerals like manganese, according to the veterinarians that send in organs for evaluation. So we're eating weak and sick mineral deficient plants, weak and sick mineral deficient animals, and residues of Roundup that further chelate or bind with our minerals, making them unavailable. Mineral depletion is linked to a whole host of diseases. Now, because it blocks certain minerals, it's also an antibiotic, but it's selective. It kills the beneficial gut bacteria, the lactobacillus, the bifidus, the stuff we pay for, but not the negative stuff like botulism and salmonella and E. coli, which can cause an overgrowth of the negative gut bacteria. This alone can create holes in the intestinal walls called permeable gut or leaky gut, and that's linked to cancer, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, autism, uh, food allergies, inflammation, and autoimmune disease, to name a few. Now, some of our gut bacteria is used to produce what's called aromatic amino acids, 
including tryptophan, which is necessary for the production of serotonin. Serotonin is a good thing. And if we don't have enough serotonin, we may not be happy, we may be depressed, sad, etc. It also regulates our blood sugar. It also regulates our ability to say, I'm full, I can stop eating. So if we have a deficiency of serotonin, because Roundup is blocking the production of tryptophan, that could cause a whole effect in terms of mood behavior and health. It also affects the melatonin, which relates to sleep. In addition, it blocks another pathway in our liver that helps detox. So that means all of the other poisons that we're exposed to may become amplified because the ability to detox through the liver is hampered. It also is an endocrine disruption at very, very tiny levels, at parts per trillion, at parts of the amount of glyphosate that's currently in our water supply. Now, it can change the balance of estrogen and testosterone. Rats that were fed Roundup in the water supply, which was less than the amount allowed in the United States, the females had more testosterone and lower estrogen. The males had more estrogen and lower testosterone. And it can also affect the aromatase. And what do we see here? We see, and it's just a fact, they admit this, butch, more butch women, bigger women. Uh, and I'm not attacking what's been done to them with the chemicals, it's just a fact, and more effeminate men. Uh, lower sperm counts, lower testosterone, uh, metrosexual activity. And, and, and again, the media always spins this like I'm bashing people for their sexual preference. We don't even get into that, folks. It's a fact that in mammals, but also in the runoff from fish, you name it, that this stuff's happening. You look at Prozac runoff, uh, and it's causing the fish to commit suicide, literally swimming up to birds, not afraid. Uh, it's causing risky behavior. I mean, we are just bathed in this garbage. I know I'm digressing off into other chemicals, but uh, we know this is happening. In addition to causing endocrine disruption, it also can affect the ability of the sperm to, to move because manganese, which is chelated by glyphosate, is needed for sperm mobility. In fact, when they fed genetically modified soy to female rats starting two weeks before they got pregnant, more than half of their babies died within three weeks compared to 10% of controls. For hamsters that were fed Roundup Ready soy, which is sprayed with Roundup, by the third generation, most were sterile, some had hair growing in their mouths, and they died at four or five times the rate. Now, birth defects are also linked to glyphosate big time, both in animals and in the human population in places like Argentina, where they spray, spray a lot of that. Roundup also damages the mitochondria, which means that we may get tired, and there's a lot of diseases that can link to that. It also is, as we say, a promoter of tumors, and you saw on the screen just now some very, very large tumors of rats. This was a study done by Seralini and others in Europe where they fed Roundup-ready corn to rats for two years. Now, were, the rats ended up dying at higher rates and earlier. They had damage to their liver, kidneys, and pituitary, and they also had multiple massive tumors. Now, they didn't know whether it was the Roundup or the GMO that caused the problem. So as part of the study, they fed Roundup-ready corn that had not been sprayed with Roundup, and that group had multiple massive tumors, early death, and organ damage. And to another group, they fed the Roundup without the corn, and that group also had multiple massive tumors, early death, and organ damage. So the Roundup was so, worse than the GMO? Well, actually, no, both. They both contained the same outcome, early death, wow. organ damage, and multiple so massive tumors. So what's worse? Tumors. It's hard to know, but I, we've tracked in the epidemiological uh, uh, trends what is related to the increase of GMOs or what's related to the increase of Roundup. The list of diseases is astonishing. Deaths from stroke, deaths from senile dementia, deaths from obesity, deaths from high blood pressure, deaths from... And by the way, infection. we see all that going up. I mean, every week I hear about some 25-year-old woman or 30-year-old guy who just dies of a stroke. Uh, it's just crazy. And I talk to thousands of people who say when they get off of GMOs, they get better from a lot of these same diseases and disorders. In fact, thousands of doctors are prescribing to people to stop eating GMOs. I speak at those medical conferences, and they tell me people are getting, from these, getting better from these same diseases and disorders, the same ones that afflict the lab animals that are fed GMOs, and the same ones that the farmers and veterinarians tell us their livestock gets better from when they start feeding them non-GMO corn sure. and soy. And so it turns out there's a correlation between the, what's afflicting the lab animals, what people are reporting getting better from, the livestock getting better from, 
pets are getting better from and those things that are on the rise in the u.s population now there was a mysterious kidney disease killing up to 25 percent of the labor force in central america among farmers working in sugarcane plantations they spray the sugarcane with glyphosate just before ripening. I've seen the documentaries where it shows the sad little family and half of them are dying and then you go to the next village and the same deal. It's just incredible. Now there was a study that showed that Roundup, we talked about how it chelates, it binds with certain minerals. It binds with arsenic and can smuggle that arsenic into the body where it gets into the kidneys. Then the situation of the kidneys allows it to un unchelate so now you have two toxins in the kidneys. You have glyphosate and you have arsenic. And this is the theory of this mysterious kidney disease that's afflicting farm workers both in Central America and in Sri Lanka. They believe it's a combination of, of glyphosate and arsenic. Sure, and what about the cancer. massive sicknesses in India associated oh, with it? Oh yeah, so there's all these people who touch the cotton plants either while they're harvesting or while they're cleaning it, and get rashes all over their bodies. They allow animals to graze on the cotton plants after harvest, and thousands have died. I visited one village where there are buffalo, 13 of them, all of them died after eating the corn, the cotton plants after a single day. These same buffalo had survived eight years eating natural cotton plants after harvest. So that's a bioaccumulation. Yeah, but bioaccumulation is interesting because Monsanto said that glyphosate is water soluble and can just go out of the body. But it turns out the glyphosate amount in the breast milk in humans is so high, it demonstrates that it does bioaccumulate, which means it's probably at higher levels of our milk and probably higher levels of our meat. So it's also found in rain samples and air samples in 60 to 100 percent in the Midwest where it's sprayed a lot. It's found in our water samples and it's found in our urine. In fact, the amount has increased so much because the herbicide is now being resisted by weeds. There was an increase in herbicides because of GMOs sure, it's a in the first 16 years by 500. And then, as you said, it kills pounds. the soil and won't even work after a while. And that's why the farmers then commit suicide in India. We're going to break. I want to come back and, and, and let you hit other key areas for this segment and one other. And then Percy Smizer joins us at five after. But let me ask you this in the next minute and a half. If they knew about this in the 80s, and I know about those studies and their own internal concerns, why would they approve this and roll it out? I mean, are these people directly like in, uh, like a hellraiser, like uh, some type of demons? I mean, what's their problem? Well, we know from the FDA memos made public from a lawsuit that GMOs in general were described by FDA scientists as dangerous. They said allergens, toxins, new diseases, and nutritional problems may be created and we need to test them carefully. But the White House had told the FDA to promote biotechnology because it was going to increase U.S. exports and domination of world food trade. So the FDA brought in Michael Taylor, Monsanto's former attorney, later its vice president, and then later back at the FDA as the U.S. food safety czar, to be in charge of the, F of the GMO policy. His policy ignored the scientists' warnings, claimed that GMOs had no difference, therefore no safety studies were needed. And now the so, world is rejecting our food and it's doing the opposite thing. Exactly. So it's a political influence over the scientific process almost every time. And there's a new, one, a new example of like this I'd like to bring up after the break. We'll do that, and then I want to hear about some of the victims of Monsanto. Folks need to remember the true veterans of this war. Uh, by the way, folks, this is so sick. I, I don't know what to say at this point. It's just thank God people are waking up. Headlines, EU passes controversial GMO food law. EU agrees to opt out deal for GMO imports. Monsanto secretly gave money to farmer caught contaminating organic farms with GMOs. Record, U.S. farmers switching to non-GMO crops in 2015. Hundreds of farmers block roads in protest of Monsanto GMO crops. Thousands of Polish farmers and GMOs land rights protest. Booming organics. U.S. farmers forced to import organic crops to meet non-GMO demand. That's what's in this TPP coming up, is more forced deals to accept all this. But then they won't let us label and just make our own choice. They're totalitarian. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to go back uh, to our guest, Jeffrey Smith. ResponsibleTechnology.org. You can find his books, his films there. Also, InfoWarsStore.com. He's been with us for another five minutes the next hour. The Percy Smizer joins us. We're really focusing in on this today. I've got some other geopolitical news I'm going to get to. I haven't yet. I said I would. There's just so much of it. It's on InfoWars.com and PrisonBunner.com. You wanted to get into one other uh, issue before you got into uh, the persecution that's, that these groups. So it's not just Monsanto. It's a whole combine of these organizations. But I'd say they're the biggest head on the Hydra. 
uh, or, or I guess kind of the main head of Medusa, but there's a lot of snakes up in her hair. Uh, maybe that's the best analogy. Uh, please continue. Sure. By the way, I'm in Ecuador today because there's one of your listeners heard our interview earlier on, started studying my work and invited me to come and speak in Ecuador. So thank you for that. Oh, well, thank you, brother. I was on The Daily Show uh, recently, and they did a terrible job in their coverage of the new genetically engineered non-browning potato and apple. I wrote a very long article on my website at responsibletechnology.org as to why this new technology may be far more dangerous than any of the other type of GMOs produced. It uses something called double-stranded RNA. Now, the code on the RNA, little piece of RNA, matches up with the code of the DNA and silences the gene. So it silences the gene that produces the browning for the apple and the potato. But it turns out that if we eat the apple and potato, this double-stranded RNA code may match up with our gene code and silence or change our gene expression. Now, as an example, they fed some double-stranded RNA to honeybees, and it was supposed to have no effect. It was supposed to be the control group. It turns out it changed 1,461 genes levels of expression. That means 10% of the entire genome of the honeybees were affected when they were fed one single meal. This is pure madness. RNA. The RNA is what viruses are made of. Uh, and when you then bring RNA into a plant or a human that's designed like this, it's beyond a virus. It's a turn off or turn on switch. It just sounds like something that would give you cancer to me. Well, it certainly could make changes that could possibly cause cancer, but we don't know. Now, the USDA's own scientists said, we don't have an assessment available to protect the public and environment from this double-stranded RNA. We need to completely revamp our risk assessment. Two years later, without revamping the risk assessment, the USDA went ahead and approved double-stranded RNA in food. Now, their excuse, their excuse as well as the excuse from regulators around the world is based on science that's 10 years old. Well, think how insane say, this is, though. It turns brown to let you know it's not as fresh. This is normal. It's like a vampire injection. So you don't need yeah. to have any oxygen, but you still are alive. I mean, this is just, this is insane. I mean, there's no... Yeah, these ap these uh, apples can last 18 days without turning brown. Uh, the potatoes won't turn you. brown at all. They'll just dry up and disappear. And we don't know we're eating... Stay there, food. stay there, sir. We're going to get here. This is insane. This just gets worse by the second. His first time was like in 1999, if his memory serves. Percy Smizer is going to be joining us coming up. Uh, final segment here with the man that heads up one of the premier organizations documenting what's happening and traveling the world, responsibletechnology.org, Jeffrey Smith. we got about four minutes left. Uh, finish up with potatoes that, 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 that never turn brown. They just, they just dry. Uh, and, then, uh, and then apples that you know take uh, 18 days or whatever you said. I mean, this is just crazy, and then they're changing the RNA to do this, and as everybody knows, you change one area of the genes, then it charts chain reactioning every time. It's just, we're just not ready to do this, bare minimum. Go ahead. Well, you're absolutely, you're absolutely right, Alex. When they looked at the honeybees with the 1,461 changes in genes, some were directly changed because of the matchup between the double-stranded RNA and the genes, and some were what were called secondary effects. Now, we had no way of, plan of predicting any of this, and yet this is right in our face in the literature, published and peer-reviewed, not just in insects, but uh, a mouse. that They fed uh, double-stranded RNA from rice, it changed the expression of a gene in their liver. So the excuses by the regulators are so obsolete, they say, oh, RNA won't have an effect, it'll be destroyed before it gets into the bloodstream, it'll never have an effect on mammals. All of that has been proven. Well, I've seen study after study, as you know, that DNA and RNA from plants uh, and you know, GMO stuff both leaks through and interfaces with us. The difference is we're designed to be in harmony with all this other stuff over all these years, not all this new stuff. Precisely. And the changes can be inheritable because of epigenetics. Now, I have to end on good news, Alex. I can't scare people about reprogramming their DNA and then saying goodbye, have a good day. <laughs> okay. let, me say, <laughs> let me say this. You may be able to do that. I can't. Uh, at responsibletechnology.org, I'd like to recommend that those who would like to see us implement our master five-year plan 
to eliminate GMOs, we could use your donation. We are so far now advanced along the way of creating tipping points in the United States and elsewhere. We see that we can eliminate GMOs for our food supply within three years, from animal feed within five years. We have a very specific plan, and we were looking for donations to support it. Now, the fact that we are even at this level where we can have a five-year master plan to eliminate GMOs shows that the work we've been doing for, in my case, the last 19 years has been successful. And by the way, you're doing the kind of stuff that will make them really come after you, so we salute you. You are a great place for people to donate to maximize an effect for humanity. And 40% of Americans now say they're avoiding or reducing GMOs. Even two years ago, 75% of Americans were uncomfortable with it, mostly because of the health issue. And now we have chains like Chipotle's and then other things where they're declaring non-GMO and getting huge publicity. So we're seeing all the early signs of a tipping point. Now we have to make sure that moms know the truth, that chronically ill people know the truth, that pet owners know the truth about their pets, that doctors know. So we have very targeted demographic groups, very specific, powerful information. And because thousands of people say that when they avoid eating GMOs, they get better, their kids get better. We have stories to tell, backed by the science. We have the communication tools necessary to change people's lives. It's, a, it's really very... Is this really not so exciting? I mean, you were coming on the show like in 99 and stuff. And back then, this was... I mean, did, 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 did this movement have 2% of the power it has now? I mean... No. I mean, right now, we are so further along. It's unbelievable. I speak to doctor's conferences that I spoke at seven or eight years ago, and they tell me since I was there, they've been prescribing non-GMO diets, and people after people after people are getting better, and they describe gastrointestinal problems, rashes, allergies, asthma, uh, weight Yeah, I mean, problems. weed killer's not good for you. Wow. Uh, uh, what a revolutionary thought, but Jeffrey Smith had to say it. Jeffrey Smith, we salute you, responsibletechnology.org. Let's talk to you very soon, as soon as you get back from Ecuador. If you ever come through Austin, we want to get you in studio. We'll be back with Percy Smizer, the farmer that took on Goliath.